Because when you answer to a higher power, when you answer to God, and you don't answer to a worldly authority, when you're far more afraid of doing something that God wouldn't want you to do than you are of what Vladimir Putin or Joseph Stalin or Hugo Chavez or, or insert name of dictator here, when you're way more afraid of offending God than you are of him, then you're going to do what God wants and not what the dictator wants, and that scares the mess out of them. That's why they persecute them. They're afraid of you, and they should be. Remember that. Hey there, fellow tacticians. Don't forget to like and subscribe and ring that little notification bell because the more likes and subscriptions I get, the more people see my conservative content, which will make America a better place and angers the dark cyber overlords at YouTube. In 1775, the Continental Congress created the Chaplain Corps. Under the command of General George Washington, each soldier was required to attend worship service every Sunday. While other armies advanced on their feet, Washington's troops advanced on their knees. It's time for The Chaplain's Report with Caleb Colquitt on tactics. Chaplain's Report today, we're actually going to be foregoing the Book of Samuel and the series we're doing on that one, at least for today. We'll pick it up later. But I just had to go with this one because I feel like we need it. And I know that a lot of you are in the same place that I am where I'm frustrated with the fact that we don't have any answers yet. I'm frustrated with the fact that this is taking so long to figure out who our next president is going to be. And that uncertainty naturally breeds things like anxiety, like fear, and that's something that I don't really have. And it's not because I'm some kind of spiritual giant or that I have everything figured out. It is stressful, but I'm not necessarily afraid or anxious about the results. And the reason is because I do know that ultimately everything is going to be okay. Because if Biden does wind up being president, and right now it seems as though he probably will be, it looks as though that even if there is actually legitimate voter fraud, and even if we really do find it, that the numbers are not good enough for Trump to overcome it, even if we find out there is fraud, it looks like Joe Biden is probably going to be president. It's not certain, but it's very, it's the most likely outcome at this point. And Biden is going to be very, very bad for the nation. I understand that. It'll be bad for religious liberty. He's going to be, I mean, it already has been, but especially considering that he's basically a Trojan horse, that he's not going to be the one making a lot of these calls or, or calling the shots here, that you will be subject to the bake-my-cake bigot kind of justice system that we had under President Obama. That's something that's going to be difficult for us to endure, especially as religious people. Biden is going to be very, very bad for the country. But the thing is, Trump was not going to be a savior. Trump was not going to fix all of our problems. I mean, we had four years under Trump. Were we still under assault by the left? Were there still people in individual states trying to curtail things like freedom of speech and religious liberty and, and calling everybody that disagreed with them a racist and a bigot and trying to shut down churches? Yeah, all that stuff still happened. Having a Trump Justice Department at the top of it made it a whole lot less likely to succeed. But you're always going to have to face persecution for doing the right thing, no matter who's in power. Even if we resurrected George Washington and put him in the White House, you know what? The country still wouldn't be perfect because there's people in it. And even though I really wanted Trump to win, Trump was not going to be a savior, and, and Trump winning this election is not going to fix all our problems. It didn't fix all of our problems in the last four years. And I think that that adds a little bit of perspective and I thought about this particular Bible verse in what I consider probably one of the greatest chapters in the entire Bible, with the exception of the Gospels. If you're talking about the epistles especially, this may be the best chapter in all of the writings of Paul in Romans 8, and we'll look at verses 31 through 35. What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who is against us? He who did not spare his own Son, but delivered him over for all of us, how will he not also with him freely give us all things? Who will be bring charges against God's elect? God is the one who justifies. 
Who is the one who condemns? Christ Jesus is he who died, but rather was raised. Who is at the right hand of God? Who also intercedes for us? Who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will tribulation or trouble or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? Paul's whole point there is pretty simplistic, actually. It's saying, take a step back. Look at who is on your side and who is on their side. You have Christ on your side. You have an interceder who is sitting on the right hand of God. You have a God that loves you enough to send his only son to die to save you, even though he didn't deserve it and didn't do anything wrong. That's how much your God thought of you. And you're worried that there are some people in Rome that don't like you? Who's going to separate you from the love of Christ? Who is able to do anything to you that God can't undo or protect you from if he needs to? Nobody. I mean, look at our position here, guys. Let's say that Biden is president for the next four years or maybe even the next eight years. Do we really think that Joe Biden is stronger than God? Do you really think that Kamala Harris, as much of a train wreck of a president as she will be, if she winds up in that position, does anybody really look at her and think, oh yeah, if, if it's a contest between her and God, she, she's got a good chance of, of staying in the ring with him for more than one round? No. There will be things that come that we don't want, that are unpleasant, that aren't good. But ultimately, we're going to be just fine. We may have to suffer some things. The world is going to hate us. It always has. It always is going to. The servant is not greater than his master. They hated him. They're going to hate us too. That's just the way that this works. It's really more of a question of how much persecution you're going to have, not whether or not you're going to suffer it for doing the right thing. In fact, frankly, I get kind of freaked out when I don't experience some level of persecution because that makes me think maybe I'm not doing something right. And when you look at those verses, if you want the cure for fear or anxiety or paranoia or even being disjointed and and set set apart and separated and, and mentally away from other people, the chaos that is this world, that's the answer, folks. Just remember that you have Jesus Christ on your side. He who conquered all things, who conquered death itself, is in our corner. So no, I'm not afraid of Joe Biden. I'm not afraid of Kamala Harris. I'm not afraid of what they can do to me. What if they do turn America into some kind of crazy socialist USSR-style country, which I don't think even they can do that. But if they did, and they make Christianity illegal and they come for us, I'm not afraid of them. I'm not. Throw me in the gulag, kill me, whatever. I'll be okay. And you will too. Yeah, I'd rather Trump be president, but that may not be within our power. And anybody that sits in the White House is there because God allows them to be. There is no authority given that is not given by him. And why is it that you think that the bad guys always go after God's people? They either go after Israel in the Old Testament or the Christians in the New Testament. Why do they always go after people of faith first? You can look at it through the Holocaust. There were Jews there, and there were also Bible scholars in those concentration camps. You look at the USSR. They got rid of all the preachers and got rid of religion. Why do people in power always go after God's people? It's simple, because they know those people, the real believers that have actual faith, they don't answer to them. And it scares them that they can't use fear and anxiety to control those people. Because when you answer to a higher power, when you answer to God, and you don't answer to a worldly authority, when you're far more afraid of doing something that God wouldn't want you to do than you are of what Vladimir Putin or Joseph Stalin or Hugo Chavez or or insert name of dictator here, when you're way more afraid of offending God than you are of him, then you're going to do what God wants and not what the dictator wants, and that scares the mess out of them. 
That's why they persecute them. They're afraid of you. And they should be. Remember that. They might have the army. They might have all the guns. They might have all the cards from the world's perspective. But we're holding the ultimate card. And not like God's some kind of sword to be used or, or to pull out whenever, because I don't think that that would be a good characterization of it. But the point is, ultimately, when it comes to eternity, we win. If you've read the book of Revelation, you understand that. If you understand anything about the Gospels, you know that just because it seems like the world won, it doesn't make it so because there's an empty tomb that proves that's not the case. And that's why having Jesus on our side is the ultimate boon. Guys, I love America. I do. Probably more than most people. Not because I'm a better person, just because I've studied it more. I love America as an idea. It's not the land. It's not the military. It's not the wealth. Even though those things are all great about America, none of that stuff is what I love about it. I love the concepts, the idea that man can rule himself. I love the idea of us having a right to life, liberty, and property, and we have inborn God-given rights that predate government, and the government just is there to protect it, not to give it to it, and not to take it away either. That the idea of America is, we'll leave you alone and let you figure it out on your own, and if you do great, awesome. You'll reap the rewards of that. If you're not good at it, then you're going to need some help from somebody else. That's what America's supposed to be like. And I love that. But you know what? If it all comes crashing down, it's only my secondary citizenship. My first citizenship is in heaven. And the ideas are going to last forever. That's what I love about America anyway. If we lose the land, if we lose the wealth, if we lose the military, if we lose the prestige, if we lose all of that, that's unfortunate. It's terrible. I wish we wouldn't. But ultimately, America still lives on because those principles are rooted in Christianity and in truth. You see, in the Old Testament, there were a whole lot of people that put their faith in their armies or their people or their land or their wealth. It never ends well for them. The people that put their faith in God and don't have any faith in wealth which can come and go overnight don't put any faith in their armies because those can be wiped out too or they can turn on you. Don't put their faith in land because somebody can kick you off of that land. You can be disposed from that land as the Israelites and Judea found out over and over again. You know what never left them? God. He was always there. He was always looking out for them, even when they screwed up and did something that they shouldn't and wound up in a situation, usually of their own making, that they didn't want to be in. He was the constant, and that's why I'm not afraid. Nothing Joe Biden can do can change the fact that Jesus Christ came to this earth and died on a cross for my sins. And so if he becomes president, I'll live. Stay the course, friends. People ask me all the time, Caleb, how do you stay in such great shape? Well, let me tell you, it's not easy. The Secret is a steady diet consisting mostly of likes and subscriptions, especially the ones where the person hits the notification bell. That's what actually gives me my superhuman strength. Likes, as it turns out, are very high in protein and iron. Sadly, doesn't do anything for your hair.